Hello class, today we are going to talk about section 2.4, which is uh, equations where there are variables on both sides. By the end of the lesson, you will be able to solve equations using grouping symbols and solve equations where there are variables on both sides of the equal sign. A couple tips to start us off. First, you're going to want to try and combine those variables first. We're going to have variables on the left side and the right side of the equation. You're going to want to put all of your variables on one of the sides to start. And the other thing is to try and keep the coefficient or the number in front of the variable positive. These are not must-dos, but they are things that are, will be helpful for you as you go through the process of solving these types of problems. So, first example, 52 minus 6x is equal to 49 plus 12x. So, the first tip that I gave was to deal with the variables first. So our goal is to move either the negative 6x to the right side or the positive 12x to the left side. You're going to do that the same way that you would deal with numbers by using inverse operations. We want to try and keep the variables positive. So we're going to add 6x's to both sides. That eliminates them from the left side of the equation, leaving me with just 52 is equal to 49 plus 18x's. So we've combined our variables so there is just a single variable listed in the equation. Then you're going to go through and solve just like the multi-step equations we talked about in last section. So we're going to take 49 away from both sides. It leaves us with 3 is equal to 18x and round it out by dividing by 18, which gives us x is equal to 1 6 or 0 0.16 repeating. Again, I don't care if you have it in a fraction or a decimal answer. If you do the fraction, please make sure that you reduce it down to the simplest form. Another example we have. This involves the grouping symbols and or parentheses. So we've got n plus 7 over 5 is equal to n plus 9 over 3. If you have something set up like this, the first thing we're going to need to do is cross multiply to solve. So we've got 3 times n plus 7 is equal to 5 times n plus 9. When you're looking at something like this, where you have a number on the outside and a group of parentheses on the inside, you're going to need to use that distributive property on both sides of the equation. So I have 3n plus 21 is equal to 5n plus 45. Again, trying to combine our variables first, we're going to subtract 3n from both sides, leaving us with 21 is equal to 2n plus 45. Continuing to solve, we're going to take 45 away from both sides of the equation, which leaves us with negative 24 is equal to 2n, and finishing it out by dividing both sides of the equation by 2, we end up with n is equal to negative 12. So when you have those grouping symbols or the parentheses, the problem, the idea that the problem does not change, you're just going to have to use the distributive property before you continue solving. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Here are the steps you should have taken, and you end up with a final answer of Q is equal to 8. If you have questions about that, please let me know when you get to class. Last thing we're going to do is solve a word problem. It asks us to find the value of x so that the figures have the same area. This requires us to remember what the area formula for a rectangle is. You should have that tucked away in the back of your mind. That's area equals base times height. So our area of our first shape, our base is equal to x, and our height is equal to 10. So base times height is going to give us 10x. The second one, we are looking at 3 centimeters on the bottom and x centimeters on the bottom. So that means our base is x plus 3. Our height is equal 
0.26 centimeters. So in this case, our base times height is going to give us 6 times x plus 3. It asks us to find it so that they have the same area, which means those two values need to be equal. Next thing we have to do, since we have grouping symbols, is the distributive property. So I end up with 10x is equal to 6x plus 18. Combining our variables, we have to subtract 6x from both sides, which gives me 4x is equal to 18. Continuing to solve, we need to divide both sides by 4, and we end up with a value of x is equal to 4.5 centimeters. Paying attention that you have labeled the answer on the word problem. If you have questions about this problem or anything else we covered in the lesson, please let me know when you get to class.